Uh, thanks for staying with us. There's nothing more classy and powerful than showing forgiveness and grace to someone who you think clearly does not deserve it. Our reactions to situations clearly have the power to change the situation itself. And as long as we are alive and remain humans, we are bound to hurt people as we get hurt. Now, whilst we may not be able to control every situation and its outcome, we definitely can control our attitude and how we deal with it. Now, if you are currently dealing with pain and can't seem to rise above above it so let's hear what you have to say you can join this conversation please tweet at us at plus tv africa or at wish africa one with the hashtag ways or send us an sms or whatsapp to 081-803-84663 and we have umi jefe hey, our umi. Next, aka the, bir hey, the birthday girl, girl. Thank you, thank so since you're the birthday girl and you have a lot of stories to share maybe we should start <sighs> with you <laughs> which, which one do you want to start you know, with it? No, so for you, you've been, you've, okay, I know about your relationship with your spouse, that you yeah. had issues and all of that. And every time you talk about that issue, and I see how you've been able to, because normally, the normal thing is, when we go through a divorce and all of that, it is okay for us to be enemies, let's be punching each other. Yeah. But, you know, anytime I hear you speak about, you know, how it is important for you to stay, you know, friends because of your child. I said, this is someone that has really, really understood the importance of not, you know, harboring pain or whatever, you yeah. know, because it's not about you at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So t maybe you should walk us through that that story first, or if you have more. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Well, for that, um, it was it was not really an easy journey. I won't lie. Um, it was very hard because some of the things that my um, ex husband, I try to talk about someone because we're civil now. You know, he locked me out of the house for two days. I slept in my car for one day. Um, he took me to SARS police station, took our three-year-old at the time to SARS police station. You know, it was so, you know, dramatic. And this is minus all the other things that happened, you know, within the marriage. Before I had my son, I lost the baby. There was all sorts of hurtful words, you know. I was made to feel like, and for quite, like, it was the first year that, you know, we got married, I, I got pregnant, you know. And during that time, I had the gunshot injury, had a surgery, so I lost the baby, you know, along the way. And they made me feel like, you know, I was like, I was like a barren. In fact, I remember somebody in his, family saying to me, well, nobody in their family has ever had a miscarried before because I had a stillbirth at five months. And those things are really very hard. At some point, I think I've told you that I didn't try to commit suicide in the marriage. So, and I think that was the time before I even actually left the marriage that I started to find healing. So the day I tried to kill myself, I was just by myself. I always say my, my child saved me because he was at home alone with me. Normally he's an independent child, just be by himself, but he was just hanging around me, doing all, you know, he was, so I was just saying to myself that for me, if you kill yourself now, this boy will be the one to find your body first. And that's the image for the rest of his life. So that day I saw there were not many counselors like we have now. So I went to psychiatric hospital, yeah, but in the government hospitals, you see a psychologist before you see a psychiatrist. And so the psychologist, when he saw me, because I still went there with my very usual chatty self, I was like, Madam, I don't think you should just see the psychiatrist. So he gave me like extra time. So while he was filing papers and work, and so he just said, he said the challenge you've had is that you've bottled up such for a long time and you've not had time to like vent and talk to anybody. And truly it was right because you know when you get married, you you go for counseling, they say well, with no third party, so you really can't tell people. And even the time that I was speaking to people, I was speaking to, you know, church, my um pastor's um, pastor's wife and you know I will speak to her we'll have challenges and she, one, next day she'll tell me to come and see her she'll bring out um, silverware cutlery and say maybe it's the way you're serving your husband that is not right maybe so you know mm. it's a long journey in fact I even left to church at some point I won't say I renounced my faith but I was just angry at God angry at everybody I didn't want to so it was really a long journey so when I did the therapy um, in the um, in the psychiatric hospital yeah. spoke with the psychologist and then I also got some I got a lot of family support that's mm -hmm. another thing mm -hmm. because many people you know they say oh, oh we already um, they, you're already married to this man they don't support you I got a lot of family support in fact I remember my father kept saying to me that if you feel like you need to come back home come back home with a space for you mm -hmm. and all of that so I got a lot of family support but the healing um, part that I think after a while I just realized that look my child Whatever has happened between, between us, if he wants to be a part of the child's life, I'm not going to, as long as he doesn't bring harm to the child's way, he's not trying to take him from me. Of course, we had that battle, of course, when we were having divorce, he was trying to have custody of the child, you know, and at this point, um, at, at, you know, at that point, he wasn't, you know, giving any financial support to the child and all of that. So even at the, when we were having divorce, I remember the um, judge was saying that it's very ridiculous, you know, you're, you're not giving any financial support to this woman, but she's allowing you access to the child because at that point, you know, we travel out of the country together. But before then, I'd ensure that my lawyer, because I said, look, I can't be looking for any child across the world, so I don't <laughs> want any missing child story. So once I was able to get over that, you know, 
the healing, the therapy, and I felt that I just decided to put my child first because whether I like it or not, I'm not one of those single mothers that say I can be mother and father. I can't be mother and father. I can only mm. be mother. Mm. <laughs> you understand? I'm not. I'm not a man. There are some needs that a man brings to every child's life that I can't fulfill. I can only Absolutely. fulfill that role. So once we were able to get over that, and I was sure that there was not going to be any hanky panky or anything, and I was, you know, able to pay for my child, you know, the support that he needed until he was ready yeah. um, to to be part of it. I just decided to just um, let it. And then also, I know many people will bat an alley when you say spiritual healing. I got spiritual healing also because I left the church for like an entire year. And the church that I attend now, those, the first time I went there, the pastor was preaching about pain and about hurt. And wow. when I was there, I just broke down, just started crying like, oh my God, this is really, you know, f you know for, for me. You. So yeah. Absolutely. So, wow. um, you know, f for me, I think it's important because people will be wondering why are we talking about this? So I, see, I, I hear when, I, I even hear doctors say that, you know, sometimes cancer, Ooh, yes. you know, comes as a result of bottling things up. And so it's important for people out there because it's our ladies' night out. We're not here to now start looking for, I mean, this is just like a show to help, you know, whoever that is out there, you know, say no matter what it is that you think is pain, just remember all the people. In fact, let's bring home all the recent people that have passed. Yeah. Do you understand? You know, nothing is worth your yeah, life. Perfect. Yeah, so, yeah. So, Uti, do you want to come in? Um, I... You know, it's, I, I personally say that anything that is going to rob me of my peace, my happiness, mm. you know, I was just smiling as Fumi was, was speaking. Um, I've learned to deal with, my story is not as amicable as yours. <laughs> I'm quite a lot more dramatic. Um, we don't have a relationship. I haven't seen him in four years plus. Wow. Um, but, you know, when I think back to that time, it's important if you're going to get over it mm. to, one, for me, very critically, no matter what it is, you have to tell yourself the truth. Mm. You can choose to play the victim. Yeah. You can choose to say, this thing happened to me. Or you can choose to pick it apart and say, you know what, I want to learn from this experience. I want to, because I have a natural behavior. Um, and it was a pattern that I saw when I started to assess how I was behaving. You know, I was, I was engaged to someone um, and that didn't work out. And he had a very strong family influence. He had a big family. His family were part of, the, very strongly involved in that relationship and eventually part of the relationship breaking down. So when I was going to date somebody else and marry someone else, I married someone who was pretty much totally disconnected from his family, family the yeah. complete opposite. opposite. And that extreme in itself was a problem. Because when you talked about family, there was nobody to go to. I knew nobody on his part of his side of the family, never met any of them. His whole family could march in here today and I'd be greeting them, no clue who they are. Wow. So the, the reality of it was I also had to own my mistakes in that process. Yeah. You know, that, Uti, there are things that you could have done differently. And it helped me to heal because we've not been able to have a conversation. We've not been able to say, you know, this is where you went. No, it, it, it literally was a clean um, clean cut. So for me, it was very important um, that I was able to look at that situation and critically say, you know what, I have to learn from this situation. Yes, I was a victim. Yes, there were times that he pulled a knife on me. I remember sleeping in a corner smaller than this because he had pulled a knife on me that night and I was so afraid for my life that I literally almost held my breath. And by the time I woke up the next morning, the only person I could call that knew him was a pastor. And they said, come and see us. And I went to, to them. I spent the day with them in the church. And the usual conversations, they were even a bit more um, helpful in understanding. And, and they decided they were going to come and counsel us at home. But that situation was so impactful on my health that um, I passed out. The last wow. thing I remember was being at that junction of, um, of um, Agidingbi and telling my driver that I needed to use the restroom. So he took me to um, the Keja Mall. I used the restroom and I can't remember anything after that. I woke up wow. in the hospital. Wow. My blood pressure was about 220, like I was this, close, this far away from a stroke. So it's important to know how impactful on your health, health yeah. Yeah. those kind of situations can yeah. be. Um, but I mean, I've gone past it. Don't wish him any ills. Uh, you know, you, you, you just have to own it and, and you move on. Absolutely. So for me, that really is where I say that when we encounter these situations, these hurts, it f you, like, you literally feel like yes. your chest is ripped open. Yeah. Somebody stuck their hand in there and yeah, squeezed and said, you know what? I really want to get you. Just yank it out. 
you have to, to it's not easy to get over it it's like, not it's not no, absolutely it's not. <laughs> when you come to ak <laughs> well i would say um my pain was imposed by myself because i had assumed that someone did something to me that they did not mm. I don't know if you encounter holding on to pain so much that you forget the reason why yeah, you were pain. Yep. Yeah. That's what happened to me. And it was so bad that I forgot the person. Like, I obliterated the person in my mind. I totally forgot the person. Like, I'm not joking. I forgot the person. That was how bad it was. And then when I found out that, you know, this really wasn't what happened, I held on to so much pain that I did not know where to start from. I didn't know where to start from even saying sorry. Mm. So just that journey of holding on to, to, to things, but that the, just holding on to it, as Uti has said, has a way of dramatically changing your person, changing your mind, changing your concept. And I learned a very big lesson from that day, that no matter, I'd been through terrible things, but it, it brings me to this point about, you hurt yourself when you hold these things. That's the yeah, truth. Yeah. Whether or not you like it. And sometimes we want to nourish the pain. So you hold it. It's like, it's like biting a sore tooth yeah. or a sore, your tongue. And you know, you just did and it's painful. But you just want to just bite on it so that there's a sweetness that the pain gives even when it's painful. Yeah. So you just feed on the pain Absolutely. and hurt yourself in the process. Yeah. And sometimes the person is even living their life. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 the person just lives their I'm life. I'm telling you. It's better to hold and, on you know, to the pain. So for us, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, when I see certain kinds of behavior these days, I'm able to take a step back to say, okay, this is not because of what I did. You know, this person is going through a lot. Yeah, and I, I think if we all get to that point where we're able to see people even when they act up, we understand that, no, there's something deeper. This is just like a symptom. Do, don't you think that the world would be a better place? Because people are asking, so, okay, after, after, you, after you forgive, after you, then, then what next? You live your life. You know, what next? You live your life. Now, there was a story that I was told about a, a young girl. You know, you know how you struggle with someone through university, paying his school fees and everything. So by the time he was graduated, that very day he graduated... <laughs> I think from and when he, no, so when he did his NYC and he got a job, that was the day he stopped talking to this woman. Oh, wow. So she was walking around bitter, heavily, you know, she was carrying a burden and all of that. To the point that she became a ghost, you know, she became nobody could see she doesn't see anybody, she just does her job and all. Not knowing that the bank manager had been eyeing her. But he didn't even know how to approach, approach her. her. You know, because she was, you know, when you are locked up, because pain, you have so much pain, <laughs> you can't see, you don't have the liberty, you're not glowing, all that thing is gone. So the very day she decided, I think, I, I can't remember how she came to that point where she said she needed to forgive that person, you know, so she wrote a letter, then it, there was no mobile phone, wrote a letter and said, as soon as she wrote that letter, I think that was her release. Yeah. So by the time she did that, you know, it was like pa 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 pa. Everything just that the worried. bank manager came that he didn't know how to tell her before. But this day she's been smiling, so now he had the oh. he had the the liver oh. to go and tell her that you know what I think I like you. And before you say Jack, they got married, you know, and everything, you know, because people I see a lot of people. I have been through betrayal as a terrible one, where it is it's almost like. You know when you love someone, you hold on to someone and you, 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 you see that person in, in a certain light and all of a sudden you realize that, I mean, the, <laughs> the things that you, I mean, That's it's so almost true. unbelievable when you hear the kinds of things that those kind of people would have done behind your back. But I held on for so long, but I was wondering, okay, all the holding on that I held on, you are stuck, you're not moving on, me. You, you, you understand? I'm stuck. I'm not going beyond where I am. So until I told myself and I said, why do I need to let these people go? Sometimes you forgive people not because of them. Mm -hmm. yeah, you forgive for them yourself. for yourself. For so yourself. That you are able to have that freedom to be able to do things. Do you know sometimes you can't even think straight? Uh -huh. You can't do anything. You know, your, your life is just in a box. You're stuck. You know, and until you let go of that pain, or until you let go of that hurt, that's the only way you can have clarity to be able to move on. Yeah, but you know? it takes a lot of self-awareness to get there because many exactly. people I was don't going even yeah. know. You have to even uh, identify yes, the and pain. And then Uti said something I was 
a very important when she said you have to own your own mistakes because especially mm -hmm. i think as women we always like to do this thing of oh he did this to me he yep. did this to me he broke my heart and everything yes but madam you to your own you own exactly. you own your mistakes you could have been perfect yes, in I was perfect because also i was saying to myself that i also made mistakes i saw some of the character flaws that yep. you know my ex had i was making excuses for either way you know there were even my parents and that's one of the things why they said they were going to support me because they were like oh, for me. We and saw then, it. Yes, because I was very naive. I remember when I was 26 or 25. Mm. I was very naive, first love, everything, everything. And you know, he was, it wasn't even just because he was way older, you know, than me. I don't know why for the life of me, I'm attracted to older men. But <laughs> it wasn't because I was way older than me. But my, my parents just, you know, said, so, but they were, the good thing they, were, they, were, they didn't do was this, I told you so thing. Mm. But, they, but one of the things, also, the therapist helped me to realize that own your own mistakes. You have made some mistakes too. So, because it takes a lot of, so many people go around, they don't even know. They're still yeah. in that thing. They're not even self-aware that they're even stuck. Mm. So that was another thing. So you even feel, when you go through that process of healing, you feel that lifting, almost like spiritually, mm. off your chest. Everything is just, mm. you, you cry. That's what I say. It's a long journey. <laughs> it looks very easy when I say it here with English. But there were days of crying that you cry. Uh, I will oh, tell you my story. Oh, die. Oh, oh, God, they break. I will, tell you, I will tell you my story how I will cry. In fact, you know the funny thing? I actually recorded some days I will cry. I said, because you know what? what? When the pain is gone, you will never you remember how <laughs> the pain was. But well, let's go on a break. We'll take a very short break. We'll be right back. Please stay with us.